today we are speaking about this certificate, which is Certified Financial Crime Specialist. And what is the objective of this session? We are trying to explain to you how you need to prepare and study and pass this certificate. Today, we are living in the age of financial crime. The meaning today, we, the most of the cases that we are dealing with related to crimes is not anymore uh, uh, limited to individuals who are doing corruption or bribery. They can be involved in tax evasion, money laundering, compliance issues. And we can see today, most of the guys who did some of the major crimes, they did economic crimes, they did uh, you know, drug dealings, human trafficking, they are actually connected with other types of crimes. So let's say a criminal, he is involved in corruption case. What he is going to do with the money? He's going to try to launder the money. Then what he's going to do? He's going to try to run away from paying taxes. Then what he's going to try to do? He's going to try to move this money to offshore country. Then he's going to try to use this money to do other criminal activities or to, to uh, support organized criminals for them to, to be able to do more crimes. So today we can see that the world we are living in is connected world. It's not anymore someone only doing money laundering or someone only doing tax evasion. These criminal groups are working together in organized way where they are committing different types of financial crimes. And today, our financial system, the financial institutions, they are responsible for ensuring that you know, the professionals who are working in banks, in investment firms, in insurance companies, individuals who are working in uh, you know, different institutions that are dealing with cash or with payment or transfers or any kind of financial instruments, they are aware of the requirement. So this is why this certification is focusing on understanding the compliance side of business understanding the financial side of the business. This is not related to someone only limited to fraud or money laundering or uh, you know, uh, uh, tourist financing. No, this is this certificate focusing on understanding from compliance standpoint, what kind of requirements I need to have to be able to uncover different kinds of financial crimes. And we are going to discuss later what are these different types that we focus on. So the first thing to start, because everyone is always asking this question, what is this certificate? Is this a new certificate? Because we didn't hear about it before. So the Certified Financial Crime Specialist is actually by the Association of Certified Financial Crime Specialists. So this association was established long time ago and launched this certification to create a different certificate in the market related to individuals who are specialized in financial crimes. And we see most of the majority of these individuals are in financial institutions. They are in investment firms. They are in government who are working on fighting financial crimes, either in the tax authority or the Ministry of Finance or Ministry of Economy or the different you know, committees or units or uh, you know, financial intelligence units that are working in fighting corruption, crimes, uh, anti-money laundering in these countries. So this is where the association decided to launch a special certificate. And this certificate is focusing on very important elements, focusing on how can we understand the different types of financial crimes. And at the same time, how can we fight these financial crimes when we are actually dealing with them? How can we look at the red flags? How can we investigate them? And what kind of evidence we need to have in place? So someone will say, so this certificate is really great. But what is the difference between this certificate and other certificates? like the CFE, like CAMS, like other compliance certificates. The issue uh, between this certificate and the other certificates, other certificates, they focus on different domains. So for example, if you are speaking about the CFE, CFE is the golden standard in what comes to fraud examination. So if you are working in fraud and you are focusing on fighting fraud, conducting fraud investigation, this is the right certificate for you. If you are working in anti-money laundering, and you are uh, working in compliance related to anti-money laundering and you are working in sanction, you know you can find CAMS is a certificate related to you. If you are working in compliance function where you are handling compliance, not only related to financial, related to operation, related to uh, you know, systems. So there are different certification related to compliance and ethics that are suitable for you. This certificate is suitable for individuals who are crossing in their work. They can be either internal auditors, they can be either an investigation department or compliance department where they are handling issues related to financial crimes, related to you know, monitoring transactions, related to sanction, related to compliance. 
So if you are working in the public domain or the private domain in that in these areas, or if you are working in the financial institution and you would like to expand your horizon to be able to understand what are the requirements when it comes to compliance related to financial crimes, this is the right certificate for you. So this certificate is not replacing any other certificate and is not suitable for someone and to take it other than other certificates. It's not like, should I take CAMS or should I take the CFCS? No, you need to take the certificate that can help you in your function and in your future career. So whatever certificate you decide to take, it's the right certificate for you based on your position, your function, the task that you do. And later we are gonna discuss what is covered in this certificate so you can decide if this is the right certificate that you would like to study. At the, at the end, everyone would like to develop their financial skills and any certificate can add value to them if this is the, the career path that they want to take. So the question that always I get, so Iyad, what is this exam about? How many parts? What is the time frame? What I need to do to take this exam? So the uh, uh, financial crime specialist uh, exam is actually 145 scenario based. And this is very important to understand this concept. What's the meaning scenario based? The meaning they are not testing your English. They are not testing your memorization. They are not testing your ability for you to be able to figure out what is the correct answer. No, they are going to give you scenarios. They are going to give you, for example, give you a scenario. One of the scenarios. Okay, we have a situation where someone noticed that there is a transaction that's not normal suspicious transaction. So what should you do? Should you report this transaction to your supervisor? Should you uh, report this transaction to the compliance department? Should you speak with the government or should you report it to the hotline? If you are not working in the compliance function, if you are working in the banking department and you notice a transaction that's not normal, not in customer account, in the banking system, what should you do? And this is where it comes. Well, based on that, you need to report it if a transaction that's suspicious is not related to customer account, related to internal business transaction, you need to report it to the hotline of the organization, of the financial institution, and they can take a look at it and see what's going on with it. But the same question, if this is actually happening in customer account, you need to actually speak with the compliance department and see if you need to report it to the uh, you know, uh, the authority in your country or create a suspicious uh, activity report or do whatever required. So the scenarios, they are going to give you different scenarios to understand exactly when you are handling situations related to compliance, related to financial crime, related to tax evasion, related to corruption, what you need to do. So the cool thing about this, if you have experience in these domain, you are going to be able to answer the questions based on your experience. At the same time, if you have understanding of the process, you don't need to memorize them, you will be able to answer most of the questions. However, there are so many technical terms and uh, uh, knowledge uh, that you need to gain to be able to understand the difference between the different schemes. What is the difference between smurfing and structuring? What is the difference between you know, trade-based uh, money laundering and you know, uh, uh, using insurance product to do money laundering? What is the difference between trust or special vehicle when it comes to money laundering? So you need to understand certain concepts, which is going to be useful for you in your future career to understand. It. So 145 questions, you need to complete the exam within four hours. So approximately, if you think about the strategy for you to, to pass the exam, the strategy is like this. If you are taking the exam, which is I took the exam myself and I passed the exam. So, so what you need to do, you need to say, I need to allocate around 35 questions per hour. So you think first one hour, 35 questions. Second hour, 35 questions. And the third hour, 35 questions. So in that way, we finish 105 questions and we have the remaining questions for the last one hour. So this is how you need to allocate approximately your time. When I took the exam, I finished all the questions in the exam in three and a half hours. So I followed this, but I was a little bit faster, a little bit slower. So I finished around three and a half hours, all the questions in the exam. I was taking the exam in a testing center. So what I did after, I went outside the testing center. This is the advantage of taking it in a testing center. You can take the exam uh, online on your laptop, but I don't recommend that. Because on your laptop, there's an environment, there's control. This is going to be difficult for you. Much better to take the exam in a testing center. I took the exam in testing center. I finished the exam within three and a half hours. I went outside. I drink some water. 
I relaxed for two minutes just to clear my mind. Then I went back to review the questions that I have doubt about. So in the exam, I have around 15 questions that I have doubt about. I'm not sure about the correct answer. So I just marked them in the exam. And when I came back, I have now 30 minutes to relax, to read these questions again, figure out did I select the right answer or not. Then I was able to review them. I was convinced. So I have around five minutes left in the exam, but I have nothing to do. So I, I, I exit the exam. The minute I exit the exam and I went outside, uh, uh, the proctor there told me that congratulations, you passed the exam and he gave me the, the, the letter. So, so four hours, is it enough? The answer is yes, but it's stressful. The questions in the exam, they are long. Uh, the questions in the exam, they are a little bit complicated. However, the good news that you don't need to score 75% to pass the exam. This is very important news and very important thing for you to notice. What you need to score, you need to score only 82 out of 125. Why? Because 20 questions in the exam, they are not going to be actually uh, great. So there is no grade for them, which is really good news. So the meaning, even if some questions you don't understand them, some questions you answer them incorrectly, they are not going to be counted against your uh, uh, score out of the 145 questions you need to score 82 questions correctly for you to pass the exam and that will give you really good uh, uh, leverage the meaning if you are taking the exam and you answer in the exam 40 questions wrong you can still pass the exam so this is what when someone will ask me is this exam difficult or hard uh, or easy i will say the exam is difficult not hard not easy difficult in between but if you are actually focusing in the exam and you score 82 questions correctly, you will pass the exam. And this is your objective. Your objective is to get the 82 score. Your objective is not to get uh, 90 and your objective is not to get 70. And I know most of my friends who failed in the exam, they got 79, they got 80. They didn't get the 82 to pass the exam. So what you need to focus on when you are studying for the certificate, you need to focus on understanding the main concepts and focusing on every question. Don't be overwhelmed by questions. Sometimes the questions are so long. So you'll be like, oh my God, the questions are so long, I'm so afraid. No, you should not say the questions are long, it's gonna be difficult for me. You need to focus on every question by itself. Read it properly and understand what they are asking for and find the correct answer. If you do this step by step, you'll be able to clear the exam without issue. So don't be overwhelmed. Say, oh my God, four hours, so much time. And what I recommend you to do before, practice. When you are going to enroll for the certificate, they are going to give you around 102 questions. You can practice them over and over to get in that mood of sitting, answering the questions that are long, that they are scenario-based. But the cool thing about this certificate, when you are getting scenario-based, that they are realistic questions. They are not giving you scenarios don't exist, number one. Number two, they are not testing your knowledge to say, okay, do you remember or do you recall or uh, do you know which one is correct? No, they are trying to understand exactly. Do you understand the concepts? But some of the questions, they have more than one correct answer. So it's multiple choice questions correctly, but some of them, they say, which one of the following are two red flags? So out of the four, you need to highlight the two red flags. So understanding the material when you are studying, you can identify which one is the red flag, which one is not. But this exam, to pass the exam, you don't need to score high score. You need to score 82 out of 125, and 20 questions are not going to be counted. But you don't know which, which of these questions they are not going to be counted. However, in case you fail the exam, you, let's say, you know, unfortunately, you couldn't get the score. In that way, you have some time to go review the study material again, do the questions again, and you can retake the, the exam after 60 days and you pay $175 for retaking the exam. So this is the information about the exam. Now, again, do I recommend you to take the exam on your laptop? I don't recommend that. I, I know so many of my friends who took the exam on their laptop. It took them an hour to do the setup and then they were exhausted. And any technical issue, or if you are looking up or down or you are moving or you are talking to yourself, they may actually stop your exam. So you don't want any of that stress take the exam in testing center to make sure everything is smooth and easy. Now, the other question that I get from everyone who is trying to take this certificate, yeah, uh, am I eligible for this certificate? Can I actually take this certificate? Because uh, I have only two years experience or I have, uh, do you know, only uh, 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 do you know, uh, 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 bachelor degree. 
uh, I don't have experience related to financial crime. The eligibility criteria are simple. You need to have professional experience. So when you are completing your application for the exam, they are going to ask you to complete the eligibility. And they are going to say, do you have professional experience? If you have for every year professional experience, you will get 10 credits. This is not a, a professional experience related to financial crime. Any professional experience related to it. So maybe it can be fraud, compliance, internal control, internal audit. All of that will be counted as fraud, uh, as a financial crime related experience. So you can get maximum 30 credits. For you to qualify the exam, you need 40 credits. So if you have one year or two years or three years, you can put it here. Then training, if you attend any training related to financial crime within the last three years, for example, you take the course related to that certificate or you take any other course related to financial crime, you can get maximum of 20 credit for that, which is one credit for every one hour of training that you take. Then if you have any other professional certificate, if you have you know, the CBA or if you have CAMS or if you have the CFE, they will give you five credits. And at the same time, if you have university degree, the university degree will also get you something. So in that way, if you have an associate degree, you get seven credits. If you have bachelor, you get 15 credits. If you have master degree, you get 20 credits. So you can accumulate all that and add it, and that will determine your you know, credits when you are taking the exam. So this is the whole, the whole idea about the eligibility. So again, the eligibility, لحتى تكون انت qualified لل exam, بده يكون عندك professional experience, بده يكون عندك training, بده يكون عندك بنفس الوقت education, لحتى to qualify for the exam. So let me give you an example, because someone will say, I, I don't know if I'm eligible or not. This is a, an interesting example. If you have one year experience related to financial crime, like I say, internal audit, compliance, investigation, fraud, and you have 20 hours of training, if you attended course related to the CFC training, which is 20 uh, hours. Then you have bachelor degree. Now you are qualified. You have the 45 credits. So this is how you need to look at it. You can be qualified if you have these requirements. Now, the second uh, thing that so many individuals, they speak with me about, they say, yeah, we are interested in the certificate, but we don't know what are the content of the certificate because we had so many certificates. I have certificate in compliance, in fraud, in investigation, in money laundering. So is this really valuable certificate for me to take? So what are the topics that are covered in the certificate? We have different interesting topics covered in the certificate. First is introduction related to the certification, which is they are going to tell you about the certificate, how you need to prepare for it. This is part of not the exam part of the certificate information. Then we have financial crime overview, understanding what are the different financial crime, how the financial crime will happen, what are the uh, 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 landscape related to financial crime, understanding in general the basic information. Then we speak about money laundering, speaking about the different schemes of money laundering, what are the red flags related to money laundering, and then understanding how can we uh, uh, prevent and deduct fraud, figuring out what are the red flags related to fraud when it comes to financial institutions. Remember, the whole focus on the certificate is on financial institutions, but this will apply to any compliance function in any domain. It can be retail, it can be in uh, you know, entertainment, it can be in uh, uh, manufacturing, any areas where compliance comes, where there's potential of corruption, money laundering, uh, financial crime, uh, fraud, uh, you know, uh, compliance issues, cyber crime, it will apply. Also, uh, uh, understanding the global anti-corruption compliance and enforcement that you need to look at when you are looking at any financial crime, figuring out how tax evasion is happening and what are the requirements globally to fight uh, uh, you know, uh, tax evasion, understanding how can we do asset recovery to be able to recover the information, uh, sorry, to, to recover the assets. So what kind of information we can obtain from different sources to be, figure out exactly what are the different ways for us to figure out where is the money related to this financial crime? How can we obtain it back? How can we look at this property? Uh, what are the different techniques we can use in different countries for us to be able to obtain these stolen assets? And then figuring out how can we investigate financial crime? What is the process that we need to take when we discover this financial crime to be able to collect the evidence, to analyze the evidence, and investigate these financial crime? We are going to go over all these details later. Then understanding the financial documents. This is where someone will say, 
uh, yeah, I don't have financial background. I don't like accounting. Are they going to ask so many questions about accounting? They are going to ask about three questions maximum, three or four questions. But they are focusing on not accounting. They are focusing, can you analyze, can you understand the financial documents? If we give you a financial statement and there's someone doing financial fraud in it, do you understand exactly what to look for? Also, understanding the different money and commodity flow. How can someone actually use different transactions for them to layer uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, financial crimes they are doing? Understand what kind of compliance program and controls that you need to have in place. And one important topic that they focus on the exam, and around 10% of the questions are coming from it, is cybersecurity. Today, most of the financial crime is linked to, to cyber crime. So they are trying these cyber criminals to hack the accounts, to do social engineering for them to be able to get access to the system of the organization or to the customer. So this is why it's important to understand the areas related to cyber, cyber crime and cyber uh, uh, you know, uh, breach. Also, uh, focusing on understanding what are the ethical responsibility and best practices that you need to follow when you are conducting any kind of you know, investigation related to financial crime, and finally understand the international agreement and standards that are available globally. So unfortunately, the, the certificate is only available today in English, and the training is only available in English. So in that way, there is no training in Arabic and there is no certification in Arabic. So if you are going to take this certification, and your English is moderate to good, you can. But if your English is not that good, you know, you need to really do additional work on it for you to be able to do it. And once you take the exam, the result will be announced immediately. So once you take the exam and pass the exam, the result will be announced immediately. So now, very important question I get all the time. So are all these topics important? We need to really study all these topics. It's so much information. The answer is no. These topics are ranked differently. You can see here, based on how big is the public. So you can see areas related to fraud and tax evasion, they are not going to be discussed so many. You are going to get maybe around five questions about it, 10 questions about it. But the areas they are going to focus on is focusing on money laundering, focusing on investigating financial crimes, focusing on terrorist financing and the regulations related to it and the red flags related to it, focusing on the compliance, focusing on asset recovery, cyber security, corruption. These are the major issues, sanction that they are going to focus on. So this certificate, if you ask me, this is compliance-based certificate. It will help you understand the compliance side of business related to financial crime. And at the same time, this is more related to investigating financial crime if you are working in an organization where they, you are focusing on investigating this money laundering and investigating issues related to cyber crime and tax evasion and uh, 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 from government standpoint as well. So, so from government, they are going to focus on some areas like corruption, cyber crime, tourist financing, money laundering, and from private sector, maybe they focus more on compliance, asset recovery, you know, investigation, and sanction. So it depends on how you look at it. So someone will say, so if I want to take this certificate, what I need to do? Well, if you are going to take this certificate, you are going to actually get this is the only reference available all over the world to study from called uh, CFCS Certification Examination Study Manual. Now, someone will look at this photo and they say, yeah, wow, this is a very nice photo. It looks like the manual is so small. <laughs> but unfortunately, no, no, it's not small. This is only a nice photo that they took. But actually, the manual is 300 pages. 300 pages of not full pages. They have actually you know, split the page into two sides. So there's a lot of information that you need to study. And I'm going to go with you over what are the topics that you are going to study in details. So at least you get an understanding because for anything, general topics is interesting. But when you go in details, you understand the topic, you understand, is this something that you, you, you would like to go over or not? So these are the topics covered in the, in the menu. We are going to be speaking about you know, the certification, which is we discussed before. We are going to speak about the financial crime, figuring out the overview, understanding exactly the technology changes, understanding uh, you know, the uh, 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 globalization of financial crimes, understand how this financial crime is happening globally. 
Then we will go over all the schemes related to money laundering, figuring out how money laundering is happening, what are the indicators of money laundering, how can we look for different you know, uh, uh, cases, how can we see you know, the regulatory framework and the gatekeepers, what are the different ways of conducting money laundering. So all the issues related to money laundering globally and based on the US law. Then we are going to be understanding that how can we understand and prevent fraud, figuring out how fraud is happening in the banking sector, understanding different fraud in the banking sector, the fraud that can happen in insurance and healthcare, the fraud that can happen in credit card, the fraud that can happen in government benefits, internal fraud, identity theft, figuring out how to prevent fraud and figuring out the different ways for us to be able to uh, 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 uncover fraud. Then we are going to be speaking about corruption, where we are going to go over the different types of you know, uh, uh, corruption that can happen inside the organization and what are the regulations that can happen globally in US, in UK, global regulations for us to fight corruption. And what is the definition of the different schemes and how can we actually uh, uh, identify the red flags related to corruption? And what should we do when we discover corruption case? So we are going to cover everything related to corruption. Then we are going to be speaking about tax evasion and endorse, uh, enforcement, understanding exactly what is the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance, understanding exactly how the different uh, uh, fraud can happen in the tax, uh, what are the red flags related to tax fraud, and what are the global regulations in US and globally related to exchanging information and fighting uh, uh, tax fraud, which is, this is a very important topic. They, they say, uh, you know, annually more than 900 billion of tax is not paid based on individuals who are doing tax evasion. Can you imagine close to 1 trillion? These criminals are running away from paying taxes and this is affecting our economy, affecting our countries, our government because they don't have the money to spend on the public services. Also speaking about asset recovery, figuring out exactly how can we recover the assets related to the financial crime? What are the information that countries can exchange between each other? What kind of tools that we can use and how can we enforce this judgment related to getting assets that are in uh, another jurisdiction? If in another country they have the assets of these criminals, how can we obtain these assets? So this is the main discussion that we are going to have there. Look, they are interesting topic for you to, to, to get an exposure for because they are not related to your normal cases. Here we are speaking about global cases between two different countries related to financial criminals who are doing on a massive scale. Also, understanding how can we do financial crime investigation. So in that way, uh, uh, related to you know, understanding the different laws that we need to, to run over it, the different technique, the different sources, how can we obtain the evidence, how can we collect, uh, uh, document this evidence, and what kind of regulations we need to follow when we are dealing with these different financial crimes. At the same time, you know, looking at understanding the financial document, like we say, this is just understanding the basic elements related to financial reporting and what red flags you need to look for to be able to identify any financial uh, fraud. Then we speak about money uh, commodity uh, flow, understanding exactly what are the different uh, ways for individuals to do money laundering using different vehicles, using checks, using correspondent account, wire transfer, uh, uh, and uh, how can actually we look at digital currency, crypto, to see how they are using these different ways for them to move the money all over the world. And uh, uh, after that, we speak about the compliance and controls, figuring out what kind of controls we need to have in our organization to fight financial crime, what kind of regulations we need to ensure that we have related to money laundering, related to sanction, related to risk financing. And then we address issues related to cyber security understanding the different types of social engineering, account takeover, how can we respond related to cyber incident, and figuring out exactly how can we ensure that the data are protected under the different data privacy laws. Finally, we will focus on the areas related to ethics, what kind of ethics you need to follow when you are conducting any kind of financial crime investigation, and understanding the global international agreement and standards related to financial crimes. Oh, so it's a lot of information for you to cover. It took me personally around six months to study for the certificate. So I got this uh, uh, manual, which is around 300 pages, and I spent six months reading and reading and reading. And I was like, oh my God, there are so many terms, there are so many concepts, and try to uh, do additional study on them to understand them because it's not easy. 
And there are so many terms and so many concepts. So sometimes you will be lost between all these terms if you don't have a good understanding or experience related to it. So what is uh, the solution if you are trying to take the certificate? Well, the association is offering a full package that you can use for you to prepare if you want to do self-study. So if you want to do self-study for the certification, there is a full package provided by the association where in this full package, you get the following. You get the CFCS exam study manual. Remember, this is self-study. You are going to take three months, four months, six months studying on your own. They are going to give you CFE online prep course where they are going to give you around uh, uh, recorded lectures. They are just recorded explaining the main concepts. It's not a course. It's just recorded lecture explaining what are the main concepts, what are the main terms. So in that way, at least you see them there rather than reading them from the book. You are going to get online practice exam where they are going to give you 102 questions for you to practice over and over. And there are some questions in the manual as well for you to practice. These questions are very similar to the questions in the exam. So if you study these questions, you will increase your chances of passing the exam. They give you an audio book. Some individuals, they don't like to read. We are living in an age of social media. No one can read more than five minutes. So they are giving you a full audio book. If you would like to just sit while you are working out or you are driving in your car and listen to it. So in that way, this is another option. It's sometimes is useful to listen rather than to read. And uh, based on a recent study from Harvard Business School, they say when you listen to anything, try to put headphones because when you put headphones, the information will be uh, uh, kept and stored and understood much better rather than just listening from the air, which is this is a, one way for you to think about it. Also, they will give CFC exam prep webinars. From time to time, the association, they do some webinars where they bring experts, where they explain the main basic concepts related to the certificate. So you'll get that, it depends on what time they, they will do it. Also, uh, the package will include your exam, which is 145 questions, and it will include your certificate and it will include flashcard uh, that they are gonna launch. So all this, will be included in your package if you decide to sign up for the package. This is the self-study package. Now, someone will say, so what is the cost of the self-study package? If I'm really interested in taking this certificate, what is the cost? As of now, if you are interested in taking this certificate and this package, this is the cost for this package. So the, the cost for the package, it's include one year uh, association membership, is include the full CFCS certification package, which is including, like we say, the, the manual, the online practice, the online prep, the exam uh, uh, webinar. The, but remember, it's all self-study. There is no instructor. You are going to study on your own, and you are going to try to remember and understand all these concepts on your own, and it will take you. Someone will ask me, yeah, how long it will take me? Maybe three months, six months. It depends on how much time and effort you are going to put for it. So this is how it will take, much will take. So the total package is around $1,520. If you are actually uh, uh, buying it uh, uh, together, the exam and the membership, you will get a discounted fee, which is around you know, uh, 1,395. If you are government, they give a, a good discount, so you get uh, 850. So this is the, the cost for the package. So someone will say, okay, so this package is interesting. So what is this package? Once you buy this package, from them, what will happen? You will get the following. You will get access to the courses. So you get access to their online system. When you go to the online system, this is your home page on their online system. You will have a section called courses. So once you log into that system, they will send you the login. Once you log in, you go to area called my courses. Once you go to my courses, you will find the course that you got, which is this course, which is the membership for one year, like I said in the package as well as you are going to get the CFCS certification uh, uh, package for the student where you are going to study. Once you click on that, you are going to reach to this page. And here I would like to highlight, you know, what you are going to get from this page so you have a good understanding of the process. So in this page, you are getting the following. You are getting the CFCS uh, 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 candidate resource guide to explain you what is the certificate, how you need to think about it, how you need to prepare. But what, what the most important thing to do after you uh, uh, get the package, 
is you need to go to the CFCS certification handbook and application and download that and submit your application. So with your application, you need to say, this is my name, this is my work experience, this is my university degree. They will request your university degree. They will request that you uh, 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 do the eligibility criteria to make sure you are eligible. So very important to do this, the first thing. Even if you're not taking the exam now, even if you are taking the exam after three months, four months, uh, seven months. By the way, this package is valid only for one year. So from the day you buy it, you have one year to complete the exam. Otherwise, you lose everything. So you have one year time frame. So the first thing you need to do, you need to download this application and submit your application to them. It's a, it's a Word document. You download it, you fill it, and you send it by email to them. It will take around one week for them to approve you to take the exam. So this is the first step. Second step, you download the C, uh, uh, FCS study manual, the manual that we discuss. Currently, the edition is the sixth edition. They are going to launch the seventh edition soon. So this is the, what you download. You download it, which is the 300 pages that you are going to study, which is, is going to take, as reading, it's going to take some time from you to read it, to understand it all in full, and you need to understand what to focus on in the exam. If you want to access the audio book, here where you can get access to the audio book under. And then they, these are all the sessions are recorded, like I say, in a video format where they are going to explain the main, main basic concepts. So once you do the application and you decide to take the exam, the exam is available and you can take it anywhere in the world. You can take it in any country you want. You can take it virtually on your laptop or you can take it face to face. So both of them are available. So now we will come to the next step. Okay, so what I need to do if I, I'm going to go take the exam, what, what is the next step? After you do the step that we discussed, now if you are going to go take the exam, this is what you need to do. You need to practice the questions. Here are the questions that you need to practice. So we have here practice questions where you, are, you can do it multiple times for you to practice the questions related to the section. Unfortunately, they don't have them section by section. They have questions about all the sections. So in that way, after you study everything related to the certificate, you need to take this practice exam. And after that, they will tell you what, which one you answer correctly, which one you answer incorrectly. So remember, it's 102 uh, uh, exams. So it will take you around three hours to take it. So it will take you some time. And after that, you know, if you are ready to take the exam, you need to click on schedule my exam and you need to follow the instruction to schedule your exam either virtually or in a testing center in, in any city next to you. And there are so many testing centers all over the world, you can schedule your exam there. So this is the process, and this is the learning system that you will get for you to study and pass the exam. So someone will say, is it really worth it to actually take this certificate? Well, I will say something very important. Any certificate in the world is based on, for number one, if it's going to help you in your career, would you see the certificate helping you in your career, in advancing your career, in getting more knowledge, in helping you move to a future position that you are interested in? And the second thing is always about knowledge, not only about certificate. Everyone say, I would like this certificate and that certificate and master degree and PhD. Any certificate in the world, it's valuable, but the more important than gaining a certificate is gaining the knowledge. We are living in a world that anyone can actually have certificate hanged behind their uh, uh, you know, uh, office. But at the end of the day, when you are dealing with a very sophisticated financial crime scheme, tax evasion, money laundering, are you able to identify them and figure out what to how to deal with them in the proper way? Knowledge is important, certificate is important, but only if this will fit your career. And at the same time, so many individuals they say, I, I earned so many certificates. I think that the, I need to earn another certificate in different domain. So someone taking certificate in internal audit. They want to take certificate in fraud. Someone taking certificate in money laundering. They want to take certificate in compliance. So sometimes it's also important not to take certificate only in one domain because that will limit your opportunities. Taking certification in different domain will expand your horizon because it's always, it's not about what you do is about understanding why you do it, how you do it. That will move you to the next level in your career. So I hope this covers exactly you know, everything that you need to learn about how can you uh, study and prepare for the certificate. And I wish you the best on your journey to become a certified financial crime specialist if this is the thing that you would like to go for.